Hello and welcome, I'm Olivia Brown with the Western Journal. Today is the day after election day and the newsroom has been buzzing. And last night, our team went to the Arizona Republicans election night party and we saw with our own eyes the energy in the room for Carrie Lake and other Republican candidates. Here's what Carrie Lake had to say. Ready to take this state back? Yeah. Are you ready to turn things around? Yeah. We have a big day today and don't let those cheaters and crooks think anything different. Don't let them doubt. Don't let them put doubt in you. We have a movement. We have a movement and we know it. Did you feel it? Did you feel that movement? You know, I, I did a lot of praying to God. I've been praying to God every day, all day. And I said to him, you make this victory come whatever way you want. If it comes decisive on election day, then bring it to us that way. If we have to fight through the BS and the garbage, then we will fight through the BS and the garbage. But how do you get fair and free elections? You have to fight and win to make them fair and free. And we needed another stark reminder that we have incompetent people running the show in Arizona. Who is ready for a change? We had great patriots around this state show up today. It was so amazing. They showed up at the polls early this morning only to be told the election equipment didn't work. Two minutes in, two minutes into voting, we had people being told, well, you're going to have to put your little ballot over here into another box. Guys? The fake media back there tried to tell us we were wrong for asking questions about our elections. Guess what? We are going to win this. We are going to win this. The system we have right now does not work. We the people deserve to know on election night, the winner and the loser. And we will bring that kind of election back to Arizona. Kerry is referring to the issues that happened in Maricopa County. We saw that there was 15 polling locations in Maricopa County, which equal to about 10% of all the polling locations in Arizona that were having issues. We actually had our founder of the Western Journal have a friend send a video to him. It went viral all over Twitter. Let's show this clip. I know everybody wants to make sure that it reads and everything is fine. Can you repeat that? I can promise can you. you can you start from the beginning yeah. and repeat that? So what happens is we have two tabulators. One of the tabulators is not working, okay? The other tabulator is taking about 75% successful. So 25% of them are being misread, and it could be a printer issue, um, or it could be the tabulator itself. So when it's misread, you have an option to put it into what's called box three, and it gets read, whether it goes downtown and gets read manually, or whether it gets refed in into our tabulator. You don't want to adjudicate. They get read, no. okay? So no one's trying to <laughs> Anyway. Of course not. Not on election day. That would never happen, right? No. That would never happen. So, so choices are, you know, you guys. Sure. If I get up there and that happens to my ballot, can I take my ballot with me and go somewhere else? I don't trust you going to box the box may never be No, down. no way. The, the, is, I'll come back. the RNC ended up suing Maricopa County to keep the polls open three hours later, but unfortunately the court denied it. Nevertheless, things are trending upwards for Republicans in Arizona. Right now, Carrie Lake is only trailing by 4,000 votes. And there's only about 73% of the vote that has been counted. So there's a lot more coming and we know that election day voters are often Republicans. So many of those votes will be going to Cary Lake. In Arizona, it's very hot. Also in the Senate race, we're looking at Mark Kelly and Blake Masters. And we're also seeing that Abe Hamada, who is running for the 
attorney general in Arizona, it looks like he could win his race. So exciting things happening out of Arizona. Right here we have the official number of counts that have to be going right now and everything that is remaining. Here's what it looks like for the house in total right now. This is what we are seeing and it's uh, going to be looking good for the Republicans. If you can see, we are in the majority right now, 222 exciting for us, but not as big as Republicans hoped to see. We're also seeing that the Senate will come down to Arizona and Nevada and Georgia because we already lost the Pennsylvania seat. This was something that nobody saw coming, Fetterman winning, and I don't know how anybody voted for him, but sad to see what we're seeing here. But like I said, it's going to come down to Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia. Let's check, check in on Nevada right now. And our races are looking good for the Republicans at the moment. Adam Laxalt is in the lead as of the moment. There are still more votes to be counted. And the governor right now, it says that the Republican Joe Lombardo is also in the lead. So very exciting for Nevada. Nevada will hold the Senate and bring that towards the Republicans. In Georgia, it looks like we're going to be having a runoff with Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker, and the runoff will likely go until December, so voters in Georgia, get ready to have more people trying to earn your vote. Very interesting to see here with how Georgia uses runoffs. It is unlike many other states and time and time again it seems like Georgia does these runoffs because they do not find the entire vote going to the 50%. We also saw last night we spoke to Nigel Farage who is a Brexit leader who came to the Kerry Lake election night party and chatted with him about everything that's going on nationwide. Good to be here, big night, what happens here matters. Key swing states, if Blake Masters wins the Senate seat, it's a red wave, it's a red tsunami. If he doesn't, it'll be a win for the Republicans, not of the order many had hoped for. And if Carrie Lake wins, it's the emergence of a new political superstar. Are we seeing this same, quote, red wave around America, why do you think there is a shift in places like Texas and Florida and people coming through? Well, Florida is a testimony to Trump, to DeSantis' ability to deliver in government and to clean up the voting system. There's not been enough of that going on from Republicans in other states, and that worries me greatly. Uh, the Republican Party needs to be the party of election integrity, of cleaning up the rules, um, rather than focusing on what went wrong in November 2020. So look, it's going to be a good night for Republicans. How good, how big, it's too early to tell at this stage. At the moment here, Carrie Lake is down a bit, but hey, only just over half of the votes are in. I think she's going to win. I also think when Trump announces on Tuesday, she could be his VP pick. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Big things coming out of Arizona. He talked a little bit about Florida. We had two winners come on our show recently. Anna Paulina Luna and Byron Donalds both won their seats. We've got a clip of them from when they joined the Western Journal. Conservative Hispanics, they automatically will try to, especially as women, they try to say that we're crazy, which, you know, ironically enough, the left likes to promote women's rights, right? Or they like to say that they're the face of women's rights. And yet the first thing that they'll do is try to mentally attack us, make comments on our physicalities, um, whether it's trying to discredit our platforms. You know, the most upsetting thing as a Hispanic candidate running for office is the fact that I have blatantly witnessed this stigma and this stereotype of what it means to be Hispanic by the left. I've posted many of these um, articles on my social media, my Instagram account. 
where they've actually talked about what it means to be Hispanic in regards to your skin color. And frankly, what that reminds me of is really the brown paper bag test that was used during segregation here in the United States, where they would basically hold up a brown paper bag and see if someone from the black community was considered passing. And that's really what they're trying to do with the Hispanic community. If he put out an attack ad saying that I was a pro-life extremist, so does that mean I'm a pro-baby extremist, a baby protector? I mean, the fact is, is that I am a minority woman. I believe in life. It's no secret that Planned Parenthood was targeting black and minority minority communities and was really founded in eugenics and so it's very ironic to see that this man a white male is actually attacking me and then blanket labeling me when in actuality that even a majority of people that are pro-choice do not agree with this platform that taxpayer dollars should be funding abortions up to nine months I mean that's completely absurd we have rising electricity prices in the country that are hurting poor families we have rising food prices in America that are hurting poor families. That's all the direct of Joe Biden and his administration. We've already talked about the wide open border and fentanyl and killing people in every city of America. That's the number one cause of death uh, for Americans 18 to 45. Uh, you have an economy that's flat on its back, that's in recession. And, and obviously people know what's happening geopolitically. Our standing in the world has decreased without question. So you have an administration that's done nothing right. And so now they have to at the name call, they have to shift blame. They have to try to create a narrative around quote unquote moderate Republicans. I think it's a joke, I think it's wrong. Whenever I hear Joe Biden's name, I think about 2020, and there was a lot of election integrity ballot measures on our ballots this time. Let's take a look at these. There was an Arizona Prop 309. We also saw in Nevada and Michigan and Connecticut. For Arizona, since we're from that state, we know it so well, how we're looking at it right now is there is a percentage of votes that have not come in where only about 73% of the vote has been counted. So right now it looks like no, but it will likely in the future swing back towards the yes. And this particular bill would make it so that people have to have photo ID and identification for mail-in ballots. Abortion it has been a hot topic and we see that there was lots of ballot measures in California and Michigan. It'll be interesting to see how all of these turn out and what it will look like for the future of America. In New York, we saw Mike Lawler have an unexpected win against Sean Patrick Maloney. We spoke with him a little while back. Let's show a clip. Why do you think that people are now moving towards the right in a notoriously liberal area? Uh, voters across the Hudson Valley are extremely dissatisfied uh, with what's going on in Washington and Albany and specifically on the economic issues, uh, inflation, gas prices, taxes, uh, as well as the public safety issue. Uh, we've seen a rapid rise in crime in New York City, uh, you know, grandmothers being pushed onto subways, young mothers being shot in their, walking their baby in a stroller, uh, bodega employees being attacked. Uh, people are fed up and they're tired of the policies that have been enacted by woke, radical, progressive Democrats uh, that have really made our communities uh, less safe. He has beaten the head of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. A very difficult thing hasn't really happened, I believe, since in 42 years. Mike Lawler joins us now. This was a hard fought campaign. It was over $20 million spent uh, in uh, attack ads on both sides. Um, but ultimately, you know, this election was never about me. It was about the voters of my district uh, and the future uh, of their families. And right now we're dealing with record inflation, surging crime, skyrocketing energy prices, uh, and people wanted change. They wanted uh, a restoration of balance and common sense. Um, and I believe throughout this campaign, uh, we stayed laser focused on those issues and uh, my plans to tackle them. Congratulations, Mike. We actually saw one of the most expensive races was a ballot measure in California to legalize sports betting. I found this very interesting. 
it did not pass. There was two measures. One was just for sports betting itself, and then the second was to legalize online sports betting. There is a lot of money involved in this, and a lot of people were working very hard for many years to pass this, and it's very interesting to see the results that went that way. Another usually de democratic stronghold is in Oregon, and it's very interesting to see that Christine Drazen is right now, it's too close to call in Oregon for the governor's race. That is historic. We spoke to Christine Drazen a little while back, and this is what she had to say. My opponent's policies, my opponent's records, and frankly, Kate Brown, our current governor, her, her approach to our state leadership in our state has led Oregon down the wrong track, in the wrong direction for far too long. It's harmed Oregon families, regardless of political affiliation. And we have a real opportunity this year to help Oregonians restore quality of life for Oregonians across our whole state and flip Oregon for the first time in 40 years. It's time for leaders that understand the connection between supporting law enforcement and having safe communities and safe streets. That's what Oregonians want. That's what Oregonians need. There's a lot of momentum for Republicans, so everyone hang tight for those election results that will continue to come in this week. Thanks for joining us.